the bar slightly over to his side. Yep, it's very early days in this game. This uh, opening was the Italian game. And uh, the players, after debating maybe a slightly rare line, slightly uh, rare move order, at least, of the Italian game. We've seen it many times, at least, the opening uh, on the tour. Now we've reached this position and it's level material. But the one reason maybe white has uh, to be happy here is that the black queen is vulnerable in the middle of the board. The rule is, the general rule of thumb, don't bring your queens out too early because she's the most valuable piece. Anytime she gets attacked or hit, she has to run away, she has to flee. And that's what's happening right now. The backbone of his whole opening repertoire throughout last season's tour and wow. clearly at the beginning of this season as well. And uh, yeah, in the World Championship match, we saw him defend from the black side. He plays it from the white side. He's the world's leading expert. So for Hans, I'm slightly concerned that he's gone into it so willingly. But uh, OK, let's see how the next few moves go. And wow, Ooh. big decision there because Magnus was just hinting at a pawn sacrifice. It was only a short term thing. But Hans now very ambitiously pushing in the center, Yvanka. Maybe white can actually jump forward with the knight and attack the queen. And this will mean that the knight on f3 can actually now jump into the center, or at least has the possibility to. Uh, knight takes bishop maybe on the cards. White can simply gang up against this pawn as well. He's done this. Uh, he has jumped in. And uh, in the current position, after black blocked with his bishop, so many tempting moves. Of course, how did I not make the connection? Kaya, you're on point. <laughs> and uh, OK, so Magnus developing the dark squared bishop. And as mentioned, he did play one of the few tempting moves we highlighted. White's dark squared bishop developing itself to a good square. And uh, OK, Hans, he's at least trying to fight back. He's counterattacking. He's now hitting this white bishop. Because, OK, Magnus does go for the move, I said. It was just too complicated to calculate. He did invest a bit of time doing that and changing things. That's where the top yeah. players really thrive. And uh, that's a really good point because uh, I see a lot of people on Twitter saying, hey, I'm playing the same openings as Magnus, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm losing and he's winning. And uh, like you say, it's not just the opening, it's uh, the middle game and it's those shifts. Yeah, it's time for Magnus to sacrifice. It definitely um, is. I mentioned material advantage. Now he's got to actually give black the material advantage, maybe better than previous generations. And there we go, Magnus sacrificing his rook. Uh, but yeah, uh, against the very top players in the world who calculate just as well as them, like Magnus, uh, these strategic factors actually become really, really important. Um, so, f OK, he does go for this, the most natural yeah. move in the position. And for example, if black is too careless, just moves a rook, for example, then suddenly some real problems after a trade here. White can start pushing pawns forward. White can even just capture this knight. And this pin is just really scary for black. It's not good. I was going to say, the reason you should put your king here as well is that you don't want to put it in the corner because then you walk into the eye line of the other bishop. Yeah. Uh, so the two white bishops, there are still some pieces in the way, but they do have great eyesight and they really scare this black king. Troubles are not over because you just... OK, just... we're going to see it. White has a passed pawn. Now, look how the bishops just protect everything. White's bishop is a beast in the centre of the board. And uh, there we go. Ooh. Magnus looking for the forcing moves, as we always talk about. Checks, captures, threats. He played a check. Oh, no, sorry. He played a capture. And then now he's playing a threat. 100% confirmed. This is a devastating position for Magnus. Pawn takes pawn. Yeah, out of desperation, Hans gives back his rook for a bishop. But now White is simply one pawn up for free. And it's not just that, this is a discovered check, as we call it, white's pawn stepping out of the way of its bishop, the bishop hitting the black king. And when the black king moves, white can just gobble up another pawn. White is two pawns up for free. And white has the strategic advantages. Mm -hmm. Black's attack, it's purely imaginative, uh, imaginary here. Uh, it's just yeah, non-existent. The white queen guards everything. White's king, super safe. This looks strong for white, but Magnus finds an even stronger one, pushing Harry the h-pawn up the board and uh, undermining the black queen. And the reason this is so strong is because you just destabilize these two pieces. These, remember, they are the dream attacking duo, attacking combination. But uh, once you destabilize them, they lose their coordination. And now this capture walks into a simple double attack, a simple fork, two pieces under attack, and Magnus is about to win. The knight jumps forward with a check. The king, of course, steps forward out of the check. And now a queen trade but this only favours white. Now you can even just take the queens off the board, capture this pawn, and this poor rook is forced on the defensive against these two pawns. It can't hold them both. Yeah, and they could have gone either way. And here, it just feels like one bad move. The rook has to go and start looking at that b-pawn. OK, yeah. he brings back his knight. The knight at least can do some of the defensive work, but unfortunately, white's rook is going to start introducing itself to the game. And once that white rook joins in, 
I think the black pieces are overwhelmed. The rook, the bishop, and the white pawns together. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're more than a match for the black rook and knight. Yeah, I was going to say there was one tiny danger, but there's not even at that. I was like, oh, you know, maybe if the, the knight can combine itself with the rook in the right formation, there might be something. But no, there isn't. These are the things that are going to be just absolutely killing for white. Yeah, so the Black King trying to gallop over and trying to rush over to the rescue of its pieces. But as you mentioned, Ivanka, this pawn stepping forward is just too strong. And this one white pawn, the E pawn, is paralyzing Black's Rook right now. Black's Rook is stuck in front of this pawn. And uh, then the B pawn will simply step forward, deflect away the Black Rook, and White will make a new queen. And Hans, you can tell on his body language, he's almost ready to throw in the towel and resign. But just a couple of last moves. Uh, why not? Just show the audience, show us why the position is lost, uh, but no more tricks, unfortunately, for him. And uh, there we go. Two pawns, they were on the sixth rank, they've moved up, they've graduated to the seventh rank. Mm -hmm. And now the Black Knight attacking the White Rook, so be careful, but you can flick in a check, gain a bit of time, and I think we're about to have it. There we go, Magnus takes the win, about to make a new queen. And he's ready for the semi-final, Magnus Carlsen will play another semi-final match in uh, the Maltotor Champions Chester.